Hello everyone, welcome to Chemizon Complete Chemistry. So in today's video, we are going to solve some of the questions of part A of CSIR net June 2023 chemistry paper. Okay, these are some of the questions that we are going to solve. So let us see the first question. Among the following, the correct thermodynamic equation of the state is. So we have to write down the Maxwell equation that we can get from the Maxwell square. Okay, for that we need to draw this Maxwell square. Okay, there are different ways of remembering the Maxwell square. You can use any of the trick or mnemonic that you remember. Okay, it is like this. Okay, this is the Maxwell square. So we need in the left hand side, if you see, we have du that is enter that is the internal energy chain. So we will write down the Maxwell relation for u. So how do you write down the Maxwell relation? First, you write the du that is internal energy change is equal to now u is in between s and v. So we write ds and dv. Okay, in front of S there is temperature, so you write T and if the arrow is pointing towards temperature, it will be plus. If it was away, then it would have been minus. Now dV, you see in front of dV there is pressure, so you write P. Now this arrow is not pointing towards pressure, so this will be minus. Okay, so in all the equation you can see next to P there is nothing. So we, what we will do is we will divide this by dV. Okay, we will divide this by dv. What we will get is du by dv at constant temperature is equal to T into ds by dv at constant temperature minus P. Okay, this dv dv gets cancelled. Now if you see there is no such option like this. So we have to again use the Maxwell square to find out another relation. Now we want ds by dv. So you see ds by dv ds by dv then the first value the numerator ds by dv in front of numerator we have t so this will be at constant temperature and the arrow is pointing towards temperature so this will be plus is equal to okay opposite to this side of the square we have p and t so we will write dp by dt then in front of the numerator that is pressure we have volume so we will write at constant volume then see the direction it is towards volume so this will again be plus okay so this is the relation this if we substitute here what we will get du by dv at constant t is equal to t into ds by dv at constant t is dp by dt at constant v minus p now check whether you can find this answer or not. Okay, du by dv at constant t is equal to t into dp by dv, dp by dt at constant v minus p. So what is the correct answer for this question? It is option 2. So this is the second question. The pair of complexes or ions that does not obey. Okay, that is very important. You have to see which does not obey 18 electron rule. So we have to find out the total valence electrons in all the complexes. First one, V, CO6, scandium, titanium, vanadium, it is D3, S2, so 5 electrons of vanadium plus 1 carbonyl gives 2 electrons, so it would be 2 into 6, 5 plus 2, 6 are 12, that is 17. So this does not obey 18 electron rules. Second one is titanium, Cp twice, Cl2. Okay, scandium titanium that is D2, 3D2, 4S2 that is 4 electrons plus Cp. How much electrons are given by Cp? There are 5 atoms. So you will assume that the hapticity is 5. That is it will donate 5 electrons. So this will be 5 into 2 plus Cl. It already forms one bond. So it will, uh, it forms one bond. So it will donate how, man, how many electrons? It will donate 1 electron. So 2 into 1 that is. 4 plus 5 to the 10, 14 plus 2, 16 electrons. 
Okay, so both these does not follow does not follow 18 electron rule or does not obey 18 electron rule. So the correct answer is option one. Okay, the correct answer is option one. Let us also see for the other complexes. Second one, Mn Br CO5. Okay, this will be manganese. It is fifth member. So five plus two seven plus Br will give one electron plus one CO gives two electrons. So two five is a ten. So this will be seven plus one eight eight plus ten. 18 electrons. So this follows 18 electron rule. Second complex Mn CO5 minus this will be manganese gives it has 7 valence electron plus 5 to the 10 plus negative charge means one electron is added. So plus 1, 7 plus 10, 17 plus 1, 18. So both these follow 18 electron rule. So option 2 is incorrect. Now let us see the third option. Third option is cobalt CO3. PPH3 minus this will be cobalt is a seventh member so 7 plus 2 9 electron plus 3 into carbonyl gives 2 electron plus PPH3 also gives how many electron it has this lone pair that can be donated so it gives 2 electrons plus negative charge means 1 electron so 9 plus 3 to the 6 15 plus 2 17 plus 1 18 okay second complex CO 4 CO12 so this will be 4 into cobalt cobalt is 7th member 7 plus 2 9 plus 12 into 2 so this will be 9 4 the 36 plus 12 to the 24 so this will be 60 okay this will be 60 okay and there will be some metal metal bonds as well in this Okay, so 18 into 4 is how much? 18 4 is a 4 8 is a 32, 2 3 72. So 72 minus 60, okay, that will be how much? 12. 12 divided by 2. So there will be 6 metal metal bonds in this. Okay, so this will follow 18 electron rule. So both these follows 18 electron rule. Okay, so now let us see the fourth option. Fourth option is FeCO5. This will be iron. Iron is six members, so eight plus five into two, ten. Ten plus eight is eighty. Okay, Fe2CO9. Two into eight plus nine to the eighteen. So this will be 16 plus 18 that will be 34 okay 34 so again here there will be one metal metal bond okay so you have to count metal metal bond as well so this will also follow 18 electron rule if you draw the structure of this so the only pair that does not follow 18 electron rule is option one so the correct answer here is option one let us see the next question here for a transition metal M, the correct order of 13 C NMR spectral shift to SiCH34 for the moieties in relative to tetramethyl silane. What is this? This is TMS. Okay, this is the standard reference that we use for use as a solvent or reference for NMR. Okay, tri tetramethyl silane. Okay, so we have CH3, CO, and C6H5. So we know that the chemical shift values, okay, the chemical shift values for both 1H NMR and 13C NMR, it is directly proportional to the electronegativity of the group that is attached, okay, electronegativity. So if you see electronegativity, it is what it is directly proportional to the electronegativity is directly proportional to the percentage as character okay so if you see sp is more electronegative than sp2 and then sp3 that is why the, that is the reason why we say alkynes are most acidic okay the hydrogen of alkyne is most acidic then is the hydrogen of alkene then it is alkane 
Okay, so here also if you see why this is like this because SP it has 50% S character. How do you calculate S characters? How many orbitals are there in SP? 1 S orbital divided by total orbital. So how many S orbital is present? 1. Total orbitals 2 into 100. So this is 50% S character. Similarly, this will be 1 by 3. So that is 33.3% S character in SP2. And in SP3, it will be 1 by 4. That is 1 S orbital. In total, there are 4 orbitals. So 25%. So if you see the structure CH3, okay, CH3 it is going to be what? It is sp3. Okay, then we have CO. Here CO is what? There what will be the hybridization? Sp. And last one, if we see C6H5, here all the carbons are what? They are sp2 hybridized. Okay, so what will be the electronegativity, order of electronegativity? It will be MCO greater than then it will be for MC6H5 then last will be CH3 okay, the electronegativity of CO is maximum so that is why here what will happen the chemical shift values order will also be the same this is decreasing order we have to write down the increasing order so MCH3 less than MC6H5 less than MC triple bond O Okay, so what is the correct answer? MCH3 less than C6H5 less than CO. So the correct answer here will be option 1. Now next question. The EI electron impact mass spectrum of CH3, CH2, CH2, CN will fall, will show base peak of M by Z value of. Okay, so here what we have to do is here always remember whenever you are stuck here it will be which Re rearrangement it is McLeferty rearrangement okay McLeferty rearrangement that will take place so let us draw the structure CN CH2 okay. CH2 twice bracket means there are two CH2 then there is CH3 okay like this CH3 so which proton is abstracted by nitrogen if you see uh, we have to form a six member transition state 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it will pick up this lone pair of nitrogen, will pick up this proton. This electrons will come here, and this bond will break like this. So what we will get is okay, nitrogen has picked up one proton. So here there will be positive charge, it is forming three bonds with carbon. Then here there is formation of a Okay, this will lose one electron. Okay, what we will get is this CH2. Okay, this is the structure that is formed. Okay, this is a charged fragment and we get the signal only for the charged fragment. So what is the, uh, what is the total mass of this that we have to find out? The mass of this will be Total how many carbons are present? Two carbons. How many hydrogens are present? One, two, three. Three hydrogens and one how many nitrogen? One. So total mass will be 12 to the 24 plus 3 plus 14. Okay, nitrogen is 14. So 24 plus 3 plus 14. 4 plus 4, 8 plus 3, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 41. Okay, so M by Z value is 41. Okay, other fragment that was formed is ethene. Okay, ethene is not a charged fragment. So, this will not give base peak. This will give the base peak. Okay, this will give the base peak. So, the correct answer is what? It is 41. Okay, third one. Option 3 is the correct answer. Next question. The 1H NMR spectrum of mixture of chloroform and acetone gives two singlet. Okay, chloroform, what is the structure of chloroform? CH, Cl3. Okay, acetone is CH3, C double bond O, CH3. Okay, so if you see the integration ratio, 
okay what should be the exact integration ratio here there is how many hydrogen one okay integration ratio is what it is the number of hydrogen in one particular group here both these are equivalent so there are six hydrogens okay so it should be one is to six okay but in the graph what we get is for chloroform we get for chloroform we get 12 millimeter and for acetone we get 18 millimeter this is for chcl3 this is for acetone okay so here if we find out the ratio it is how much 12 is to 18 divide by 6 this will be 2 is to 3 okay so we, we have to find out how much molar ratio that i take to get this integration ratio so how do you find out that first write down the actual integration ratio into let's say the molar concentration required is x a okay, molar ratio required is x and we want what we want the ratio to be 2 is to 3 okay so find out the value of x x will be 2 by 3 into 1 by 6 will go on the right hand side it will become reciprocal 6 by 1 okay so this will be 3 1s are 3 2s are this will be 4 by 1 so what is the correct answer? Correct answer will be option 4. So this is a question 12. The number of signals expected for the given compound in 1H and 13C NMR spectra respectively are. So let us draw this compound first. Okay, we have this 5 membered ring. Okay, then here we have it is fused with a four membered ring cyclobutane ring and here we have cl okay now let us draw the hydrogens so that things are clear there are two hydrogens here two hydrogens here here the carbon is already forming how many bonds one two three and four here also there are four bonds so there will be no hydrogen next will be these hydrogens okay below the plane above the plane okay so if you see above the plane the environment is different and below the plane there is no ccl group so the hydrogens those are above the plane will give one signal those are below the plane will give different signal and also if you can see if i draw a plane like this Okay, if I pass a plane like this through this molecule, we can see there is a plane of symmetry that is present. Okay, there is a plane of symmetry that is present. Okay, so now we can count the hydrogen. This two will give one signal. Okay, this two will give second signal, two. Then these two above the plane will be three. Okay, these two below the plane will give four. This will give 5 and this will give 6. So how many 1H NMR signals are, will be seen? It will be 6. Now we have to check for the 13C NMR. Again let us draw the structure. Now we have to count the number of non-equivalent carbons. Okay again if you see I will I can draw plane like this. Okay, like this so if you count the number of carbons how many carbons are present this both will give one signal these carbons will give second signal this will give third signal these two will give four sig fourth signal and this will be five so how many 13c nmr signals are present there are five so 1h nmr is six first there was 1h nmr okay respectively means First, what is the 1H NMR? How many 1H NMR are present? 6. Okay, so 6. And second, it is 13C NMR is 5. So 6 and 5, this option is incorrect. Correct answer is option 2. So in this question, for the radicals A, B and C, the correct order for relative rate of addition to CH2 double bond. Okay, CH2 double bond CHCN is. So the rate of radical reaction the rate of radical reaction it is directly proportional to the 
बॉन्ड एनर्जी ऑफ दी सी एच बॉन्ड के फॉर्मिंग द स्टेबल रेडिकल स्टेबल रेडिकल सो द रेडिकल स्पीशीज दैट दे हैव गिवन इज सी एच थ्री एड कम फ्रॉम वेर इट हैज कम फ्रॉम सी एच फोर नेक्स्ट इज सी एच थ्री सी एच टू फ्रॉम वेर डिड आई गेट सी एच थ्री सी एच टू रेडिकल आई कैन गेट फ्रॉम इथेन सी एच थ्री सी एच थ्री सी एच थ्री एंड फ्रॉम वेर डिड आई गेट सी सिक्स एच इलेवन रेडिकल सी सिक्स एच इलेवन रेडिकल आई कैन गेट फ्रॉम साइक्लो साइक्लो एक्सेन Okay, this is C six H twelve. If I remove one C H radical, I will get this. So we have to find out the bond strength of this. Now, how can we determine the bond strength, which will be most easily breakable or which will break fastest? It will be the one where there will be formation of a more stable radical. Okay, the radical that will be most stable, formation of the most stable radical. That CH bond strength will be weakest. Okay, this is inversely proportional. Okay, lower is the bond strength, more will be the rate of radical reaction. So, if you see which is going to be the most stable radical, if I see the order of stability of radical, stability of radical is it is tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary greater than CH three. Okay, so here the correct order will be which is going to be the most stable radical. It is going to be this radical. Okay, I break this bond from cyclohexane. I will get C six H eleven radical. Okay, this will be most stable, and then it will be primary radical. This is which this is secondary radical. Okay, this carbon having radical is attached to two other carbon. So this is secondary. Then we have. primary radical this will be next stable radical this is carbon having radical is attached to one other carbon and then there will be ch3 radical okay since this cyclohexyl radical is most stable this ch bond will be weakest if the bond is weakest it will break faster if this break faster okay bond energy is less ch bond will break faster so more will be the rate of the radical reaction Okay, this CH bond will break faster. That is why the formation of secondary radical will be fastest, and hence the re reaction of this radical will with this compound CH two double bond CHCN will be the fastest. So the rate, the order of rate of addition will be C greater than B greater than A. Okay, so what is the correct answer? The correct answer will be option two. Now let us see the next question. The two energy levels N X. Okay, let us write down the given values. There are two energy levels whose values are N N X is equal to one, N Y is equal to six. Okay, for other, what is the value of N? For other energy value. Any n x is equal to three, n y is equal to two. This is for a particle in two-dimensional rectangular box. So, what is the general form of energy for one-dimensional box? It is n square h square by eight m l square. What is n? N is the energy level. Okay, this is for one D box. So, if I want to find out for a two D box, what will be the formula for two D box? It will be in two dimension. Okay, it is a rectangular box. Okay, so L X and L Y both values will be different. N X and Y value will be different. So how do you write that? This will be N X square by L X square plus N Y square by L Y square okay, into H square by m. Okay, H square by eight m. This is the formula for energy for the two D box. so there are two energy levels they have told that they are what they are degenerate means the energy level is same so we can equate both these values 
ओके एन एक्स स्क्वायर बाय एल एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस एन वाई स्क्वायर बाय एल वाई स्क्वायर ओके एच स्क्वायर बाय ए टेम दिस इज फॉर वन एनर्जी लेवल फॉर अदर एनर्जी लेवल इट विल बी द सेम एन वाई स्क्वायर बाय एल वाई स्क्वायर एच स्क्वायर बाय ए टेम नाउ एच दीज आर कॉन्स्टेंट सो वी कैन कैंसल एच स्क्वायर एट एम ओके नाउ फॉर द फर्स्ट वन एन एक्स वैल्यू इज हाउ मच इट इज वन ओके एन एक्स वैल्यू इज वन सो दिस विल बी वन स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय ओके वॉट इज गिवन एल एक्स वैल्यू इज गिवन इट इज वन प्लस एन वाई हियर इट इज सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाय एल वाई Okay, L Y is what we have to find out. Okay, this will be equal to here N X is three square, L X is one square. Okay, L X is one for both the box for uh, both the sides plus N Y. N Y value is two, so two square divided by L Y that we have to find out. Okay, so solve this. what we will get okay what we will get 1 square by 1 that is 1 plus 36 by ly square which is equal to 3 square is 9 9 plus 2 square is 4 by ly square okay so we can rearrange 36 by ly square minus 4 by ly square which is equal to 9 minus 1 that is 8 Okay, so this will be base are common, so I can subtract. Thirty six minus four is how much? I'll write here. Thirty six minus four is thirty two by L Y square, which is equal to eight. Okay, so L Y square will be thirty two divided by eight. That is four. Take square root. L Y will be root square root of four is two. Okay, taking square root on both the sides. So L Y, what is the value of L Y? L Y is two. So two, which is two, this one. Okay, don't mark this. This will be wrong because this is three. Okay, these are the options. These are the values. So we have got the value is two. So we have to mark option one. So the correct answer is option one. Next one, the number of oxygen atoms bonded to each phosphorus in P four O six and P four O ten. This is phosphorus oxides. We must know the structure of this. Okay, how do you draw the structure? First thing, what you have to do is you draw four phosphorus like a square and add one one oxygen in between, like this. Okay, first we are drawing P four O six. Okay, first step is this. Then you have to draw the bridges. Draw the two bridge. Okay, there will be one oxygen like this between the opposite phosphorus. Okay, this is the structure of P four O six. Now, how many? The number of oxygen atom attached to each phosphorus. So, let us consider this phosphorus. How many oxygen atoms are present? One, two, three. You take any phosphorus. Let's say this one. This is also attached to three phosphorus. One, two, and three. Okay. So, for first P four O six, the answer is three. Three oxygens are attached. Now we have to draw P four O ten. Okay, again, do the same thing. Draw four phosphorus. Okay, one one oxygen in between all the four phosphorus like this. Then draw the bridge between the opposite phosphorus. Okay, P four O six is done. Now we want four more oxygen. Then go for phosphorus oxygen double bond. Okay, phosphorus belongs to group fifteen, so it can form how many bonds? It can form five bonds. It has five valence electrons. Now, if you see how many oxygens are present, let us consider this phosphorus: one, two, three, and four. So there are four oxygen atoms. So the answer is three and four. Three and four. The correct answer will be option three.